Looking over the wall of Itemba Labantu, one instantly sees what the South African statistics show. Almost 80% of the population of Philippi are unemployed. 50% of the youth do not have anything substantial to fill their day. They are not studying or working. Ultimately, this means they do not have an income. There is no social network on which they can rely. What do they do all day? How do they support themselves? What are their dreams and their goals? Do they even dare to dream of a brighter future? Or do they find comfort in alcohol and drugs? The people in townships have many problems and needs. Many ask themselves, how will I get money for food and clothing, school fees for my children, and many more? Is a life of crime really the only way out? Many of them turn to a life of crime in order to survive. Many of them join gangs in order to find a sense of belonging. Who will show our youth the right way? Who will give them positive recreational activities? Where can they undergo a career path which doesn't cost too much money? Who will teach our children English and prepare them for primary school? Who will take care of the sick people? Who will give us work? And most of all, who will give us hope? Hope to move forward so that we will not disappear in poverty and agony. For many years, Itemba Labantu have been the answer to these questions. In several individual projects, which we are about to show you, we try to better the lives of people and give them a new hope. To emphasize the change brought upon the people within our projects, we will start with the youngest ones. For example, Asona. What's your name? Me, Asona. And how old are you? Five years. Asona is one of 32 small township children for which we lay the foundation for his life that lies ahead of him. All of the children come from socially disadvantaged families. Some are HIV positive and others do not have parents and live with relatives. Most of them do not know their fathers while their mothers fight for survival. With us they are without problems and may sing and laugh happily. We provide them with nutritional healthy meals. We teach them and allow them to celebrate life and they enjoy their summer days with a swim. In two years, they learn to speak English and several important lessons for life. We prepare them physically and spiritually so that when their time at Itemba Labantu comes to an end, they are ready for primary school. To ensure the safety of the children, well after their school day, we provide them with an aftercare program. Transportation from their school to our aftercare is the first step of their well-being. Every day at 2 p.m., 60 hungry kids arrive on our premises, where they are relieved from their long day of schoolwork with a tasty meal. After they are fed, the children let loose and exert their remaining energy in various games and sports activities. After the children have eaten and spent some time in the fresh air, they are gathered into small groups for extra lessons. Due to limited space, our church is used to facilitate partitioned classroom areas. This is followed by lessons given based on relevant material from their schools, material which they learn again and absorb. This is very important as the tutorials are presented to them in English and not in their mother tongue, Isikosa. The aftercare program is run by four Germans and seven local volunteers of which three are part of our marimba band who have toured Germany a few years ago. Other than sports and spiritually enriching activities, musical education is also provided. The music lessons are embraced with utmost enthusiasm. We teach them how to play a range of instruments, including the recorder, trumpet, saxophone, marimba and steel pan. Thereafter, a few children manage to gather enough energy to still partake in our karate class. After a very eventful day, the children go home to rest and have no remaining time or energy to get up to any mischief. The more children we teach how to live a happy and fulfilled life, the less criminals and unemployed people will be around in the future. Other than the children, the youth and the young adults are very close to our hearts. 
seeing that the youth do not have any designated areas for recreation other than the illegal shabins. The Temple of Bantu is the only place where they can come to. The more activities we offer them, the less chance there is of them getting involved with gangs who tyrannize the people in the community. This is not just something which we hope for. It is something which we have experienced over the past few years. We do not force anything onto the youth. We merely offer them various options and it is up to them to take advantage of this. Many of them are overweight due to malnutrition as their poverty-stricken lives limit them to a maize meal diet. So the youth, specifically the young women, partake in our Taibo and aerobics classes in order to shed a few kilos. Once our new soup kitchen has been built, we will offer courses which demonstrate how one can lead an inexpensive, healthy, nutritious lifestyle, even in a poor community. Our young men and few of the ladies spend many hours a day in our overcrowded gym where they work out and exert their energy positively instead of wasting it in gang fights. They regularly go on tours and have already returned with several trophies and medals. Our trainer Andile was even awarded with the Trainer of the Year Award. Besides all the activities that we offer the youth, we also encourage them to help with the daily cleaning and the renovations of the center. This would consist of cleaning windows as well as painting. In case these activities do not already shape the ideas of what they want to become and assist them in finding employment, we also offer career guidance workshops in which among several other topics, personality development and presentation skills are covered in the program. Another facet is our computer school, which is always full of eager youngsters. After three months of computer training, they receive a certificate, which has already helped some of them to find employment. With regards to personality development, theatre and dance play an important role. Here they learn to express the things that affect their lives. Things such as crime, drugs, sexual compulsion, rape, and being neglected by their parents and teachers. In self-written performances, they discover that there is some hope for their situations. Some of their theatre pieces were showcased at the biggest theatre in Cape Town, and some of their other pieces have won them several prizes. For the Cape Town City Council, a play on xenophobia was produced and presented at several schools. With theatre being a tough industry to break into, very few will have a chance to pursue a career in it. However, one young man who does not have to worry about his future in the theatre world is our youth worker, Mordi. He was given the opportunity to work as a theatre director in a prison in Norway. We also offer the youth a very practical internship program. Our motor mechanics workshop gives them the opportunity to learn a trade that will help them provide for their families. Some of our past students have already found work in other motor mechanic workshops. Others take advantage of our solar mechanics workshop program, where they earn a qualification in the subject of renewable energy. Although this particular industry is very new in South Africa, many of our previous students have already found gainful employment within it, one even in America. Other than the internship programs offered, income generating projects also play an important role. One of these projects is our ceramic workshop, which produces beautiful ceramic goods to help additional funds, as well as the expenses of the workshop, which include water, electricity and insurance. Since the beginning of Itemba Lebantu in 2003, many single unemployed HIV positive mothers started making beadwork products in order to earn an income and provide for their families. Their cultural trademark, handmade beadworks, are on display and can be purchased at our Rondalville shop. Unfortunately, the demand for beadwork gifts has dropped dramatically and the ladies only earn money sporadically. Our care centre with 18 beds that started as a small hospice nine years ago has developed into being an important factor in the Western Cape medical landscape. The South African government has recognised this and now funds 95% of its running costs. All patients receive antiretrovirals from us and can return to their homes in good condition after two to six months. We often receive letters from our patients in which they express their gratitude for the care that we give them during their time at our care centre. Once a week, the church bell is rung and calls all our staff, interns as well as patients into the church for praise and thanksgiving. Here we are spiritually recharged and our faith is strengthened. 
We consider ourselves to be one big family, where skin color and cultural differences do not play a role. With strength, courage, and new hope, we leave the house of God and return to our work and training stations. From high above, our center seems calm and peaceful, even though in our daily lives many people pass through its gates. People who after 18 years of freedom still need help. They knock at our door and we let them in and help them. Please consider to help us too, so that we may continue to help the people and give them new hope. Si wele le, si wele le, si wele le.